you want to know how to make your wine taste and smell better? Well, if you do, you've come to the right place. Once you finish this video, you'll know how to make a good wine even better. This is one video in a four video series that will help you get the most out of your wine. In this video, we'll deal with six things, all related to aerating your wine. In the next few minutes, we'll look at number one, what is aerating? Number two, why do you aerate? Three, which wines need to be aerated? Four, different ways to aerate your wine? Five, what is an aerator and do they really work? And number six, you'll see me do how to aerate your wine. Now I've been involved with this business since 2003 and really didn't appreciate the importance of allowing your wine to open up until about 2007 or 8. That's what this video is all about giving your wine the best chance to both smell and taste great. Keep in mind, if at any time you like what you hear, click like, subscribe, and hit the little bell so that you'll be notified when there's a new post. Also, take a moment to make sure that you share this with your friends. I'm sure they would appreciate it. The first thing we want to look at is what does it mean to aerate a wine? Aerating wine simply means exposing the wine to air or giving it a chance to breathe before drinking it. Aerating wine, especially red wines, help bring the process of softening tannins, rounding out texture, and enhancing flavor. When the air and wine interact, two things happen, evaporation and oxidation. Encouraging these processes to occur can improve the quality of the wine by basically changing its chemistry, which leads us to the second thing, why aerate? When you open a bottle of wine, it often smells medicinal or like rubbing alcohol. Letting a bit of the alcohol evaporate allows you to smell the wine, not just the alcohol. Evaporation is nothing more than the transition of a liquid to a gas or a vapor. You aerate the wine to allow the evaporation process to begin. It can dispense some of the initial odors, allowing the wine to smell like grapes instead of alcohol. Sulfites in wine are also dispensed when aerated. Now actually sulfites smell a little bit like rotten eggs or burning matches. So it's not a bad idea to let the fresh air in and get the odors out. Now as I mentioned, oxidation is another thing that happens in wine. It's a chemical reaction between certain molecules in the wine and the oxygen from the air. It's like when you cut an apple and they turn brown. Same as iron rusting, that's oxidation. This is a natural reaction or process in virtually everything. It occurs during winemaking and even after it's been bottled. Ethyl, which is basically the alcohol in the wine, can also oxidize. Some wines benefit from change in flavor and aroma as they do oxidize. You'll pick up fruity and nutty aromas and notes. Oxidation can even cause your wine to turn and smell something like vinegar if it oxidizes too long. It makes simple sense. Wine has been locked up in a bottle for some time, at least a year. Getting the air to the wine is like getting your summer house opened up for the Memorial Day weekend after it's been closed up all winter. As a result, your wine will smell and taste a lot better. At the very least, it refreshes the wine and perks it up. Number three, which wines need to be aerated? While some wines benefit from aeration, it either doesn't help other wines or else <laughs> makes them taste downright bad. Generally, those that benefit the most are nicer wines, young red wines, and wines with high tannins. Oh, also, uh, earthy flavored older red wines, especially those that have been uh, aged in a cellar. Oh, actually, actually, you might want to taste the older wines before you aerate them. They may be good to go right away. However, there are wines that don't need to be aerated or breathe at all, such as uh, Pinot Noirs and Burgundies, uh, Beaujolais, uh, Cotes de Rhone's, some lighter Zinfandels uh, uh, and light Chiates and oh, oh yeah, Dolcettos, which I had last night. It was phenomenal. In general, whites don't need to be aerated as much. 
Also, inexpensive wines, which are ready to consume, don't need aeration. By the way, how are you doing there? Is this information making sense? If it is, pause the video just a second and write ASTI in the comments below. The fourth thing we'll look at is ways to aerate your wine. If you uncork a bottle of wine, there is very little interaction through the narrow neck of the bottle and then the wine inside. The, the air really can't get into the wine. You could allow 30 minutes to two hours for the wine to breathe on its own in the bottle, but aeration greatly speeds up the process so that you don't have to wait to drink the wine. Oh, by the way, uh, that's one of the other videos in the four video series, letting your wine breathe. Now, another way to aerate your wine is to pour it into a decanter. A decanter is a container that holds an entire bottle of wine. You should check out my video called, are you ready for this? Decanting your wine. Anyhow, you can also pour wine back and forth between two containers or simply swirl the wine in your wine glass before drinking it. The easiest and most effective way to aerate wine is to use an aerator. This aerates or opens up the wine as you pour it into the glass. Keep in mind, not all aerators are the same, so don't expect the same level of oxygen infusion from each type. This leads us to the fifth thing. What is an aerator and do they really work? A number of years ago, I was at a wedding. I met this guy, Rio Sabadici. Now, Rio was an engineer and inventor. As we were small talking over lobster claws and filet mignon, I came to find out in 2007, Rio invented the first wine aerator. He named it the Venturi Wine Aerator. I let him know that I had had one and he told me all about his invention from an engineer's perspective. He explained to me in detail how it worked. It was actually absolutely fascinating. There's no way I could get into the engineering nuances of the Venturi, but here are the cleft notes of the cleft notes of how an aerator works. Most aerators apply the Biernoli's principle, which goes something like this. <laughs> By the way, are you impressed that I even remembered th that name? Birnoli. This is the Venturi aerator. By the way, sorry for the discoloration, but this old guy is pretty well used. Uh, you start off with something like a funnel. It's bigger at one end and smaller at the other end. It has little holes in the sides and it also has, you'll see here, it has a removable screen in it to catch sediment. When you pour a liquid, the wine down the funnel, the liquid goes slowly at the big part of the funnel and passes by the little holes where the funnel begins to get smaller. The liquid speeds up at the smaller part of the funnel. With a difference in velocity, there's an alteration in air pressure which causes a vacuum. This vacuum sucks air into the little holes and mixes with the liquid, the wine. With these aerators, there's a perfect mixture of air and wine. This thing is amazing. Who thinks of this stuff? Well, I met him. Number six, let me show you how it works. You can actually hear air being sucked or pulled into the, and through the, the small holes in the sides. This sound is unique to the Venturi aerator. Uh, that's actually one of the reasons why I like it. It lets me know that my wine is being aerated. Now you have to ask yourself, do these things really work? Yeah, you betcha they do. You've got instant betterment. <laughs> betterment, I'm not even sure whether betterment's a word, but that's what you've got. Uh, there are a number of aerators on the market you'll find electric and hand port acrylic devices like the Venturi. I'll do an assessment of the different aerators another day, but a word of caution. If the aerator attaches to or fits into the bottle, there can be some leakage. Several names you can look for are Ervana, Rabbit, Venturi, and Zazol. As we get ready to wrap this up, 
I just want to make sure that if you're looking for some wonderful wines, check out my website in the description below. And don't forget to enter your discount code, Asti Wines, at checkout. Again, the discount code is Asti Wines. Well, there you have it. Everything you need to know about aerating your wine. Also, hit subscribe. Click the like button if you've got something out of this video. Folks, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Until next time, cheers. Thank you.